Welcome to another fishy Saturday, or actually not fishy Saturday, but Tuesday, early in the morning, and we're going to do a big water change in this tank. Let me tell you why. Those that understand in the fish hobby, you do, let me see closely there, you do water tests, see where they are, okay? Typically, you look at your pH, your ammonia, which is the, the poop in the tank, you look at your nitrates and nitrites, as you can see here, three different things. What I noticed in my tank yesterday, especially with, I call him the bull, you guys can see him, he's swimming around, the red-tailed catfish, is that he's acting a little lethargic. He wasn't kind of going aggressive at the food. Now, it can be a lot of different reasons. He's not hungry. Um, it was too early for him. Not for sure. So I put the food in there. And usually when you feed your fish, you, you put the food in there, you wait for a few minutes, you watch their behavior, because everybody's completely different, and you assess them there. And one thing can be that you assess them there is their behavior change. He's usually more aggressive, that's the call the bull. He goes for the food fast. If other fish are not fast to him, especially because he's a bottom feeder like a catfish is, they're gonna eat all the food, right? So he eats all the food. Yes, he did not. So me, what I do is test it. So I zoom in, I say, okay, what's going on? How are my levels? What's happening? So we lose, look at pH. pH needs to be 7.6, you can see there, 7.6. So that was good. Ammonia needs to be zero PP parts per million. And nitrates needs to be zero PPP parts per million. And nitrites, you don't want to get above 180 parts per million. So it's test that you buy. I noticed yesterday is two things. My nitrites, which is the last one, was 160 BPM. And I just did a water change on Saturday. So this is another big water change today. Well, also what I noticed is that my ammonia is 0 0.50 ppm. Now, most people can say, well, ah, it's okay, you should, should wait a little longer. I realized once my fish behavior changed, I test the water, see what's going on. Let me find out the problem here. There are problems. So, what I'm going to do today is do a video on a massive water change. So, typically, this is a 180 gallon fish tank, and I do about 30 to 40 percent. I never call it to probably do 50 percent water change. I'm just not there yet. Um, sometimes you do really major water changes and shock the fish. So I'm gonna shoot a water change, and usually what I usually do is see this gravel on the bottom, right? Or substrate, they call it. Most time you vacuum the substrate and it gets all the poop and all that stuff at the bottom of the tank. However, because of my time constraints today, and because I do vacuum these once a month, I'm only gonna do a water change as far as this. Change 30% of the water, test it again, and see where they are. Because obviously, you know, I want my fish to be healthy. I want them to go nice and big. And, and the bully, my first guy was about three inches long, and now he's looking at about this long. So he's getting really, really big, he's healthy. I want him to stay healthy. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. So I opened the lid already, and what I'm going to do is go down here and grab my massive water pump. So I'll put that top right now. I'm going to grab my 50 foot hose. And what I'm going to do is make it easy myself. Drop it inside here. Drop it inside the tank. And I haven't fed these fish yet, so they're probably are really, really hungry. However, I need something to kind of hold this open. However, I'm going to do it right now, and I'll probably feed them later on tonight and check the behavior. So. I'm going to not turn the pump on yet, so I'm going to turn the switch off, I'm going to plug it in here, I'm going to grab my hose, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and just, you know, right to the lawn, right? I mean, this is good water, good ammonia, and I can make my grass healthy from there. So I'm going to go water my grass and see what happens from there. So, hose outside, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the pump on and start draining the fish tank. It's going to go relatively pretty fast. So, let me kind of go around here and zoom in with the camera so you guys can have to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. 
So you can see the bullets swimming around, air wands swimming around. They know something's up, they know something's about to happen. So let King drain out and I'll be right back. Now, as the tank begins to drain out, what I'm going to do is step behind the hose, make sure not to trip, of course, and I'm going to start turning the pumps off. The reason why I turn the pumps off is for two reasons. One is it's going to start making a lot of noise, and two is because what happens is two big heaters in here. I can't see, but the way in the back. And what the heaters is that if you go past the minimum water level, Obviously, they can burst. So I want to make sure my waters don't burst. I want to make sure less noise, of course. And um, water pump is doing its job. So we'll walk around the other side and turn on my other pump. Now, in, in, in the fish hobby, you know, there's a big, you know, cabin here, and I'm running. That I can see as I run three big canister filters that are right down there. I run those with every single tank. And um, the more filtration, the better. Uh, typically, in most tanks, uh, some people run is called biological, mechanical, and chemical. So, biological will be, let's say, the usually round uh, pellets, uh, not pellets, but more or less round that are for good bacteria. Um, Mechanica is going to be, let's say, your sponges, your pads, to get all of the, you know, poop up and catch all the stuff. Uh, third thing is chemical. What I typically refrain from doing on my tanks is any chemical media. Um, some of these fish can be very, very sensitive, um, chemical burns, and, you know, you want to give your fish the best environment. And, you know, as I, as I think about what I'm doing here in this tank, and I think about no work, right? When, when we think about work ethic, and especially for someone like myself come from the 90s, is you know, the harder you work, the, the, the better you'll get. The harder you work, the faster you'll get there, right? And I don't know how big working hard is and, and how big, what is working hard? Does it mean I work 100 hours a week? Does it mean that I don't work much at all? Or what's really work ethic? And, you know, I think we, we get caught in our mind a lot of beliefs. So one of my beliefs is work ethic is that if you're not working hard enough, someone isn't working hard of you. Now, that was an old belief, and now I'm realizing, wait a minute here. So my dad told me that, it became my belief, and I started doing it. And when I work harder, I'm not getting the results I want. I'm thinking I'm not working hard enough, so we tell ourselves to work harder. Or we do some things, we, we tend to compare ourselves to others. Like, okay, well, this person over here is working hard on me, so I need to work harder, right? And they create all these, these levels. I mean, I look at the big tech companies out there, and, and a lot of times, especially in mental health, is that everybody's assuming everybody else is working harder than them based upon some factors. Maybe they look at the chat, and the guy's green always online, or maybe he says he's working a lot of hours. Or maybe, hey, he's a single guy, so he has a lot of time. He might be working out of hours on family. And we develop these, these beliefs or our cause assumptions that we have no facts to support that. And that's where our mental health becomes affected. You know, we, we're constantly thinking what we know, and honestly, we don't know shit. Just, we just don't know anything. We think we know what we don't know, or we think we know that it changes. And, and, and that's why, you know, when it comes to the hobby, you know, I like to look at facts, right? The fact is, I notice a behavior change. That's a fact. Another fact I notice is, oh darn, my levels are off. That's a fact, right? So, when I look at this, okay, cool, so these are my facts. Let me try something different based on my experiences. Instead of assuming everything's okay. Like, I could assume last night, oh, uh, the boy's doing well. You know, you can press hiding behind there. The boy's doing well, and he, he'd be okay. Well, there was something that was happening, right? And the first thing I do is I, I go to my fish and I figure out, okay, what's happening to him? What's going on? What can I do to make his life better? And, and that's how we overcome different assumptions in that, is that we, we got to absorb the facts. What do we know based upon what facts are presented in front of me? Instead of just assuming everybody's working hard, I'm not working hard enough, I got to work harder, right? To, to what? Working hard 
without a goal, is this to me a definition of insanity? It's like, so if you're going to work hard, what's your goal? What's, what's the long term plan? You know, what's going to be affected by that? How's it going to come? So I'm going to go here, I'm going to do a massive water change, a water still draining out. Um, and after that, I'm going to go back in and fill it back up and do a water test and test what I know so I can make better decisions based upon any assumption or interpretation. And that's, you know, what I disbelieve about work ethic is that we tend to believe that work hard, that we'll get some kind of goal or work hard, that we'll work hard on anybody else. Well, everybody has a different definition of working hard and we got to think about our definition of working hard, what it means for us. And stop saying that our definition is someone else's definition. We have no idea what someone's definition is. And the best thing to do is really just kind of observe, ask questions, get more feedback. You don't know what you don't know. So that's my thing on that. So I'm going to let the, the fish tank keep draining and I will come back to when I start. So I'm getting down to that, I told you, 30 to 50% water change. And... What I'm going to do now is shut off the pump, drain the water out, or turn it off. Now, if I kept the pump off, gravity takes over, not gravity, sorry, the flow is already there, right? So right now, the pump is off, but it's currently still draining water out. So remember, if you're going to do a pump system, you got to take the pump out because water is still going to drain because the flow is already there. Uh, so I'm going to take the pump out, so stop draining water. So there you go, stop drinking water. Let the water kind of sit in there, it's already there. I'm going to put the pump to the side. Make sure I plug it. Also, when you get the fish tank hot, you use a surge. Make sure you turn it, uh, sorry, turn. Make sure you get a waterproof surge, because um, that can be a problem. Um, so, now what I'm going to do is that I've got clean water in here that's been treated in this. You guys can't see it, but in this bin, it's about 65 gallons. So, I have another pump that's already in there. So, I'm going to do it. Take the lid off. The water is nice and warm. You know, being wherever you live at, you always got to look at your water system and climate, right? I live in a cooler climate, so my water coming out the tap in the backyard will always be cold. So, what I did is I went on eBay, got two 500 watt heaters, one in the big bin here, one in the small bin. I warmed the water up, I treated it. Uh, using the chlorinator prime and beneficial bacteria, which is stability to fill actually tank up. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it with stress code later on for the fish. So, I use some chemicals just to help the water and get the fish in the right environment. So, now I'm going to fill the tank up by dropping a pump here at my clamp. I make sure water is there, check the flow. Um, these are pretty powerful pumps. It's about 2,500 uh, gallons per minute. So, and because this hose is obviously, you guys can see, it's thicker than the hose I have here, it's going to drain a lot uh, faster out of here back into the tank. So, I'm going to plug it in, turn my surge on, and the water is going to go. There you go. Now it's in the tank. So, what I'm going to do now take this hose off. As you guys know, you know, I have some else to do this job, clean up, make sure these stay organized and neat and clean. So you guys can watch the team fill up as fast as possible. Well, I'm back. Time to put the hose away. Clean up your stuff. You always have to keep things nice and neat, organized and clean everything up. Pump for the job. I'm gonna take the old one that I use. Wipe tank's going up, wipe that down, clean it up. And I'll put your stuff away, make sure you wait for the next time, right? I've been typically watching the video, I do water change in, in 25 minutes or less. So I've timed myself and um, I'm trying to do this water change day and shoot the video and, and talk to you guys out there and just you know, being to the play hobby and, and how important mental health is and how important that you know you take care of our fish and you know it's like you take care of our animals you know you're gonna make sure you take care of yourself I mean that's what I'm doing right now is I want to get my fish friends the best environment possible and if that means put extra effort to do the water changes test stuff 
and see what's going on. I'm going to do that to get the best environment. So you guys can continue to watch it fill up. And I'm going to do another water tank in a smaller tank. You guys know, Big Bird, still not eating for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so I'm going to do another water tank with him. I have a smaller tank here. And um, we'll see what happens. Turn the camera around so you guys can watch me as I pretty much do another water change while that one's filling up right here with Big Bird. You know, you see Big Bird is on his side and that's usually an indicator something's going on. I've done several water tests, I've done several changes, and I just can't figure out what's going on. So over here's a little bit different. I do have a pump system. But what I do is I use a siphon, which has some five C here, to drain the tank out. So this one, three waters in a small tub. I'm going to drop a pump inside there. Great. Now I'm going to plug it in. The first free plug it in is going off the switch. Put it to the side, hang it over, and now I'm going to fresh water into the tank. This tank's about 14 gallons, and it's called my quarantine tank. And in a quarantine tank, uh, anytime you buy a new fish, you always uh, quarantine it if you can. If you can't, uh, try to get a quarantine tank because that's going to be crucial in that. Make sure they, you know, you don't want to get a whole tank full of fish sick, right? And what can happen is that if you get a fish sick, and go to a bigger tank, and I'm going to 80 over there, you guys see, what would happen is now that treat 180 gallons, right? So it's cheaper. More efficient, you can use a smaller tank. And you can see it's quite swimming around, try to get lots of water, but you know, I'm gonna keep doing the best I can to find the right food. I've tried brine shrimp, I've tried blood worms, I've tried pellets, I've tried sinking pellets. Uh, I've tried everything I can to, to give this fish an environment. Sometimes it's not for fish keeper itself, it can be the fish, it could be a shock of a different environment, it takes a while to acclimate. Um, technically, it's been almost a week Thursday, so it's coming Thursday to be a week, but I haven't seen it eat. I've seen it eat small bits and pieces, but not enough. So I'm getting a little concerned, and I'm doing my water test, I'm trying to feed him, observing him, and he's getting accustomed to the behavior. So he's going to the top, so hopefully that's a good sign he starts eating. Um, some fish can be very, very shy, and some fish cannot be as shy and more aggressive towards the food. So. This guy is a little more on the tenant side than I'm used to, but it doesn't mean I need to give up, right? I mean, there's something that has to work, and I always believe try and, and try to see my fit. Don't give us some easily, ask questions, and see what's going to be done. So, he's all filled up. Fresh, clean water. I might definitely get a mess with rock you know, a little later, but that's that's uh, Big Bird, so hopefully he's a lot better now. Now if I swing the camera, oops, I don't want to do that. Let me swing the camera over here. The tank is almost filled up. So you can see the tank is getting there. It's almost filled up. Um, so I'm going to zoom out. It pumps in there. I always, at this point, I then turn on all the pumps, get the water going, get it heat up. Because sometimes when water changes, come to the crop. So, um, Usually I warm my water up to about 80 degrees in the bin itself as the tank needs to fill up. And now I'm going to turn on the pump system, get the pumps going, get the full water going, and you know, make sure they have what they need. All pumps are on, all water's going. Super excited. I was able to get all the stuff before I start work. So this is one of the Ways to put a hobby in which you gotta make sure, you know, take care of your fish, take care of your future. So I'm just gonna take the water level now, see where I'm at, make sure I don't feel the tank too much. And it is just about full. I do it now. Just about full. And um, water is definitely bring out of here pretty fast. So it is looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this pump off. And the reason I'm going to turn it off is it takes about a fill. I don't want to fill it all the way to the top. Um, the reason being two things. I don't want the water to splash out. Second thing being is this will not be my water change today, so I'm going to save some of the water that I have to change. Another take a bit to the side. 
but this thing is complete and I want to say thanks again for watching me change my water and listening about mental health and how I love this hobby and I will stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for listening.